Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, my colleague from Florida, Mr. DeSantis, may have asked this question, Mr. Krebs, but um, did Russia determine the outcome of our election? Uh, sir, based on the, the cybersecurity technical hacking aspects of state and local election officials, we don't have any information that suggests they had access to vote tallying uh, and therefore uh, any ability to technically change votes. One of the ways to influence the outcome of an election is not necessarily the vote tally on the day of the election, but voter registration. Is that accurate? Uh, I, it could be. Well, I, so if, if I can understand your question, you're asking if we can influence if, votes if, if, by disrupting voter registration processes? Or manipulating the voter registration to register people who are not eligible to vote. Uh, so coming at it from the angle of disrupting the uh, registered voters and their ability to vote, we've already talked a little bit about the resilience of the system. But in terms of adding additional people to the, to the vote, I, you know, I, I'm not sure what the, what the question is. Well, my point is this, is that there, there are more than one way to influence the outcome of an election. We saw this in 2008 and 2010 with a group called ACORN. Uh, in their voter registration efforts in Nevada and Colorado and Florida and other places where they were registering people. Um, there was, uh, in Indiana, uh, 2,100 voter registration forms that were invalidated because they were all filled out by the same person. Uh, there was another 5,000 that were set aside because of that. You had uh, a lady who was leading the 2010 effort in Nevada, uh, 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 Project Vote, uh, uh, program for ACORN, who was under indictment, uh, Amy uh, Busafink. Uh, then you had a situation in Colorado where uh, they pressured the Colorado uh, agencies that uh, deal with people who are on public assistance, and their um, um, fraudulent registration rate was four times the national average. So there are other ways to influence the outcome of an election other than manipulate, trying or attempting to manipulate the vote total on election day. Is that is that a fair assessment? Sir, I don't have experience in, in, the, in that side of the, uh, the vote process. I'd have to defer to uh, the election officials at the table. Anyone want to respond to that, Mr. Hatch? Yeah, there will always be attempts to meddle in elections, whether that be through a cybersecurity attack or through influencing social media or through trying to get additional people to, to register to vote. As an election official, as a local election official, I have to focus on the things that I can control and the things that are within my, my domain. And so we, we recognize that there are all sorts of influence out there, and there will be always. Uh, what we do is we make sure that the public is confident in the election process itself, and we do that by outreach to candidates, parties. Do you have voters. a responsibility to protect our election process uh, from all threats, both foreign and domestic? Which, Absolutely. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. I just want to enter to the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, a report from the Capital Research Center on what happened with ACORN, just as a reminder that when we talk about protecting our elections, we're not talking about just protecting them from out foreign influence, but also from domestic influence, and it's critical. I agree with uh, my colleagues on both sides of the aisle that it's absolutely critical that people have confidence that that the vote count is accurate, it reflects the will of the people, and it hasn't been manipulated. So when we, we talk about that, I, I hope uh, that every state is taking this seriously, that's not just making sure that we're protected from foreign influence, but also from domestic uh, attempts by any group from any side of the aisle uh, that would try to influence the outcome of an election. And I, I, is that part of what... Uh, uh, we're doing here. You're nodding your head, Ms. Toulouse Oliver. Uh, absolutely, and I think the examples that you just gave with regard to to Acorn, we we had similar situations happen when I was a county clerk in New Mexico. Um, found questionable voter registrations, referred them to law enforcement as appropriate. And I think that goes to what we've been talking about all along, which is that we have to not only try to protect our systems, but we can never have a 100% secure system. So it's also, um, it's also important to remember that our systems are resilient. And so identifying, finding, rejecting fake registrations, um, 
being able to identify if fake registrations were to come in through an online portal as well. Um, that's all part of what we are doing, and absolutely, it doesn't matter who is trying to interfere with our elections, foreign or domestic. That's what we are all focused on. Mr. Chairman, I uh, appreciate the response of the witnesses, and I just would like to say that each one of us are outraged that the uh, Russians made an attempt, but we should be equally outraged when anyone makes an attempt to deny the American public uh, their hard fought for and, and well defended right to, uh, to elect for themselves the representatives that they want. I yield back. 